Hello everybody and welcome to the Bite Mark. Now, before we get started on today's video, I want to mention uh, a few updates to you all. As you'll notice right here, I have a sexy new avatar. <laughs> oh yes, and it was made by a, a friend of mine who I met recently who is a commission artist. Her name is Marami-chan. Or Myrami Chom, I, I don't know. The link to her Trello account is in the description below. And another thing I want to point out to all of you, um, I have a Patreon now. Now, of course, I'm not going to be e-bagging, but uh, this is basically my tip jar. And, of course, as you may or may not have noticed, I've also made an opening and an outro, which I uploaded quite recently to my channel. Also, with that being said, let's move on, shall we? This topic of today's video, which is Gamergate. Now, I just want to let you know before we get started, um, I've, uh, I don't know much about this, but um, I'm guessing it's probably just a bunch of petty squabble slash drama that turned into something really big, but we'll get right into it. Uh, before we get started, though, one final thing. Uh, a YouTuber called, named PSA Sitch, he made a, a video explaining uh, game, the Gamergate controversy, which is linked in the description below. With that being said, let's move on. Okay. So apparently, based on the title, this uh, article is meant to explain to people who aren't necessarily geeks, like myself, or gamers. <laughs> Until recently, you have lived a life blissfully unaware of the online hashtag Gamergate movement. Um, pretty much. But last week, computing giant Intel pulled its ads from an independent game development site thanks to the gaming lobby. Oh, really? Now that major companies are taking sides, it's time to figure it out. Let us be your guides. What is Gamergate? Hashtag Gamergate is an online movement ostensibly concerned with ethics in gaming, in game journalism, <laughs> in game journalism, and with protecting the gamer identity. Really? Okay then. Really, gamers are nothing more than just one thing. People who like to play video games. There are casual gamers, then there's the more hardcore gamers, there's many different kinds. There's even also the assholes, which litter every single fandom, but uh, yeah, these types of enthusiasts uh, apparently need protecting, ladies and germs. Obstensibly? Even regarded generously, Gamergate isn't much more than a tone-deaf rabble of angry obsessives with a misguided understanding of journalistic ethics. Oh, really? But there are a lot of reasons not to regard the movement generously. Well, of course. I mean, I'm guessing right now, this is petty squabble. How did Intel get itself involved? Intel removed its ads last week from Gama Sutra. Nice name. <laughs> a niche website for video game developers at the behest of hashtag Gamergate. I'm going to call it hasht hashtag GG. Whatever, moving on. Okay, <laughs> shouting, uh... Article reading voice, which he's like, shut up, you! I'm telling the story. Not gonna happen, but okay. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> okay. So, with this website, which took particular, this website took particular offense to an article by journalist Lay Alexander, which argued that gamers, in the traditional sense, are becoming irrelevant as. Angry young men grow up and the medium evolves to include new audiences. Well, there's nothing wrong with adding in new audiences, but there's going to be a lot of casuals in that regard. The article is, That article is over a month old, though. Right. Gamergate actually began in August as a pernicious attack on one female game developer, Zoe Quinn, and her sex life. Okay. Quinn has been the, the victim of death threats and, harass, and harassment since she began trying to publish Depression Quest, which is a text-based game partially based on her, on her own experience with, with depression into, in 2013. Now, of course, I know that these all lead to other articles, but since this whole article is summing all that up, um, I'm not really going to go too deep into them. Now, I'm just basically going to be reading the main article and just giving my thoughts on it there. I will also be including the link to said article in the description below. 
So yeah. Last last month, the New Yorker attempted to explain why Quinn and her game inspi game inspired such outrage among gamers. Depression Quest is not a real game. It's just it's just words. Its portrayal of depression is too personal to be relatable, but it's hard not to look at the last several weeks of chatter in the gaming community and not come to the conclusion that it's about the fact that she's a woman. Okay. Why, why do you say that? I'm getting to that, noob! The harassment against her reached a fever pitch in August after an ex-boyfriend, Aaron... Johnny, Johnny, Aaron Johnny, Johnny, or whatever, uh, E.G., wrote a series of blog posts alleging that Quinn had cheated on him with five other men, some of whom worked in games or, or in game games journalism. Um, don't you mean gaming journalism? But whatever. In game, in gamer social media circles, a conspiracy immediately took root. Quinn had definitely fucked those five guys. Ooh, wow. Strong choice of words. She definitely fucked them. She fucked those guys, and gamers decided that they even turned it they even turned it into a joke about the burger chain, and she'd done it to get publicity for her games. Um, okay. Whoopsie. Oh, whatever works, right? Quinn's address and phone number were made public short, shortly afterwards, and the threats against her became so immense that she left her house and started couch surfing. Okay, poor thing. I feel bad for her. Depression's no joke, ladies and gentlemen. It happens. I mean, I don't have a severe case of it like some people do, but I could definitely understand it. Last week, the New York Times reported that she hadn't been back since. Poor thing. So Intel pulled its so Intel pulled its ads from Ga, from Gama Sutra because of a bunch of people attacking a woman after her friend claimed she cheated on him. Well, not quite. In September, the attacks on Quinn coalesced into an organized campaign, coordinated on 4chan, Reddit, YouTube, and in various IRC channels. Gamers came to a consensus that publicly harassing a woman over her sex life was a bad look. They quickly pivoted to focus on corruption in games journalism. Alright. All for one girl, I guess. Maybe they wanted to get into her pants. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. They started with Kotaku writer Nathan Grayson. One of the alleged five guys who stood accused of, of writing positively about Quinn while engaged in a sexual relationship with her. Oh. Alright. Let me see. But Grayson never reviewed Depression Quest. He once wrote half a sentence about the game before his relationship with Quinn ever started. But that's about it. Criti critics of Quinn and Grayson have also raised concerns about this Kotaku article. It was written before they started dating. Hmm. How about that? Well, I can tell you right now, I read this portion um, as I was uh, skimming through this. Uh, through this article uh, before starting this video, and yeah, there really isn't much mentioned there. They're right. Not much really to say on that part. Despite numerous news sources, including Kotaku itself, which have, which have debunked the existence of any review, some gamers continue to trot it out as an example of journalism corruption months later. Journalistic con cor <laughs> Journalistic corruption. Okay. Makes sense. Kotaku Kotaku and Gawker are sister sites, both owned by Gawker Media LLC. Okay, then. Surely the gaming community is not entirely made up of misogynists and angry idiots, right? Near the end of August, a significant chunk of the gaming, of the gaming press declared itself fed up with the type of gamers who would make threats against Quinn and other prominent women in games, including controversial feminist, feminist critic... Anita Sarkeesian. Ooh. It's hard to say nice things about Anita. She can't take criticism. I know about how bad she's been on YouTube and in public and silencing people whenever they have criticisms about her. So yeah, I know, I know about her. I especially know about plenty of people who made videos on her. Such as Rags and many other anti-SJW channels, commentary channels that 
focus on that. There has been so much hate, so many angry words, so many accusations over what? Video games? Women in said video games? People who write about video games? It would be absurd if it hadn't forced people out of their homes for the fear of their personal safety, unquote. Which wrote by, which was written by Kotaku's Luke Plunkett. <laughs> Plunkett. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not Plinkett. Or Limpet. Linkit. <laughs> Fag! <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know. But anyway. A number of sites took the opportunity to write, ab to write about a demographic change in the gaming community. The death of the gamer, essentially. Okay, that, 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 that's kind of blowing things out of proportion. Gamers aren't exactly going to die. There's always going to be people that play video games. There's a certain kind of them, and most of them are young, but, but that's beside the point. That doesn't mean every single one of them are young. But you know what I mean. My point is that I don't see how that's, that's really relevant at all. That's stupid. Headlines like, The end of gamers! Gamers are over! And we might be witnessing the death of an identity appeared on gaming news sites. Huh. Wow. People just love to be stupid, apparently. Is that is that where the hashtag slash name uh, Gamergate came in? Yes. The Gamergate movement was born, borrowing a hashtag coined by conservative Firefly actor Adam Baldwin. In response to this widespread re repudiation re repudiate repudiation of the term gamer and the scummy layer of misogyny it had picked up. I'm sorry, I... I, I apparently can't pronounce things. But anyway, but you said that gate hashtag Gamergate participants believe they're fighting for video game journalism ethics. Right. Hashtag gamer hashtag GG participants believe that game journalism has been corrupted. There are too many writers who maintain friendships or other close relationships with game developers. Hang on, I'm gonna drink some water. Never mind for now that the game developers who are most often complained about are people like Zoe Quinn, independent, crowdfunded, and frequently from under, <coughs> under rep, from underrepresented identity groups. Hashtag, gamer, hashtag GG's mission, publicly anyway, is to convince games writers, <coughs> video game writers, to adopt the same ethical standards as real journalists. Okay, then. But what, what what does that mean? Thanks for putting that article, because I was just going to ask that. <laughs> it's like it's reading my mind. It's never been clear what that would mean, though, because hashtag GG has never really been about ethics, although some sincere participants have taken up that discussion. Chat logs released soon after the Five Guys scandal broke uh, have revealed that the movement was focused on destroying Zoe Quinn first, reforming games, re reporting sound, and reporting second. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with me? I can't spell today. <laughs> Amid discussing the size, shape, and smell of Quinn's vagina and what to do with leaked nude photos of her. Wow. Ugh. Plotters from various 4chan message boards also dropped gems like, and I'm quoting here, I couldn't care less about it. I just want to see Zoe reveal her come up. It's, ooh, yes. Because I have no life. <laughs> and I have nothing better to do. It's not like I can't look at porn or anything. <laughs> from another conversation. I kind of want to just make her life irre irreparably sick. Horrible. Wait, what does that sick mean? Don't you mean hick? Like, ir irreparably hick. Horrible. <laughs> but what if she suicides? Good. I know they were possibly from different people, but I don't give a shit. Moving on. Eventually... Slightly cooler heads prevailed, and the trolls who would soon form hashtag GG shifted their goal from destroying Zoe Quinn to something ostensibly, ostensibly about journalistic ethics. 
The more you try to attack her directly, the more she gets to play the victim card and make a bunch of friends who will support her because since she has a vag, any guy is misogynistic. Oh, one of them reasoned this, basically. <laughs> <laughs> This is just a bunch of petty drama. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> People just love to blow stuff out of proportion. So the ethic complaints are a red herring? Many hashtag GG participants truly believe that they are fighting in an important fight against corruption in game journalism. But to an outside observer, it's bizarre that they identify the greatest threat as the small, independent, free, crowdfunded developers and not the huge profitable game companies that advertise on game sites. Now, when I say free, I'm of course talking about independence. I like to overhype stuff, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever, moving on. <laughs> okay, but what about the death of the gamer stuff? I mean, does that play a role into anything? Ethics aren't the only thing hashtag GG is concerned with. As with the movement made... As with the with the movement, which made the shift from a homonym attacks to insisting that its only interest in Quinn was an example of nepotism and corruption in the gaming community. Uh, industry, you know what I mean. It also began co-opting the language of social justice movements and of journalism to legitimize its complaints. Okay, then. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that's uh, certainly something just doing anything to make their argument stick, apparently. <laughs> oh my god, that's it's really bad that she apparently was an example of that. I, I, I'm really just sad that this whole drama unfolded, regardless of whose it was. I mean, Quinn really sh uh, had some sort of um, breakup with other people. Um involved in the gaming industry that's one thing to note because i also saw that other video that i linked down below the explanation by psa sitch which has uh shown that zoe quinn had a relationship with five other guys like like this article says and apparently yeah it just got out of control it's one thing to have like a bad breakup but it's really bad to like call people out and air your your dirty laundry in public i would know because well i felt the effects of it i didn't specifically represent gamergate in that aspect but you know what i mean although their movement targets women specifically hashtag g gators insisted that they speak for a victimized demographic and that anyone who opposes misogyny while making generalizations about gamers must be hypocrites okay <laughs> like i said doing whatever they can it does sound muddled in their letters to advertisers they argue that every article called gamer this is basically a dead or outdated identity that represents a uh, conflict of interest. That sounds a bit muddled. G Gators demanded to be seen simultaneously as a 70 million strong market force, too big for the ind industry to ignore, and as a persecuted minority. Hmm. How about that? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> trying to do everything. We G Gators are strong. G gate and only G gate. Misogyny, misogyny is everywhere, and we must kill it. Oh, whoops! <laughs> A friend of mine was uh, online. Um, so yeah, they warn advertisers that that it's racist and sexist when a gaming site dares to point out that most angry gamers are young, white, and male. And at the same time, they argue that angry young white males are those sites' target audience, and writers offend them at their own risk. Um, they're going so far as to say that only a certain type of people, such as saying that angry young white male gamers only play video games. <laughs> those people are racist! And sexist. <laughs> See that? <laughs> oh my god! At the same time, they argue that 
angry young white males are those sites target audience and those writers offend them at their own risk well <laughs> it depends on what writers they are <laughs> there is such a thing as good etiquette but apparently some people doesn't believe in that but it's making it seem like all of them do it it's like they're fucking assholes <laughs> It's ir it's ironic then that G Gate is also that hashtag GG is also spamming advertisers with links to Leia and Alexander's highly controversial piece that argues that the stereotypical gamer is not is no longer the only audience available to the industry. Huh. The epiphany is that hashtag GG is fiercely resisting that games can be by and for the people outside the target demographic, which smells a lot like something advertisers love, potential new customers. Well, yeah, where they, and of course I can say one thing, there is such a thing as games being streamlined to appeal to more casual players. Such as Dead Rising becoming a lot more easier with uh, the release of DR3 and 4. So, yeah. So, oh, um, but that has nothing to do with Gamergate. That's something that's been going on for quite a while. And some bosses ended up being a lot easier. Um, but, oh, and some games ended up, but, well, actually, yeah, like some games would be streamlined, like, the, there, certain things would be removed. It's ridiculous. It's like they care about more of uh, quantity than quality, and, you know, that doesn't always work. So is hashtag Gamergate all white men? No! And you're a fucking idiot for thinking otherwise! Some women and people of color have expressed varying degrees of support for some components of the movement's aims, but its most fervent pro proponents are so desperate to maintain the, the illusion that they represent an oppressed majority, as if that makes any sense at all. That they've created copious fake accounts to artificially inflate the size of the movement, and even designed a cartoon female mascot named Vivian James to advance the idea that hashtag not all women care about female representation in games. Um, there is, uh, there are the SJWs that constantly bitch about how women are portrayed in games, but, you know, they don't really think too much about stuff. Or pay attention to a lot of things. Vivian James? Who the hell is that? Meet the female gaming... Meet the female gaming mascot born of anti-feminist internet drama. Oh. So that's who she is. <laughs> oh, I, I actually... I actually saw uh, the, the picture of this character in a... Um, you know... Another article, but yeah. So, it, it, not the article, that, that that video. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I was I was scrolling down to see if there was anything else. So, like any other pictures besides those. So yeah, uh, has this really been successful? Despite Gamergate's eight self-contradictory positions, it has managed to get some of what it wanted. Prominent women who make and write about games, and have been who have, have basically been chased out of the industry. Kodaku has, Kotaku has so far, has went so far as to ban its writers from, from contributing to developers on Patreon, a crowdfunding website popular with women in games, notably Gamergate's targets Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian, editor-in-chief Eve Steven Totilo, Totilo. Later clarified that the policy applies to any direct financial support of, of developers. Huh. Wow, this is just one big fiasco of drama. <laughs> I mean, it feels a lot like they're kind of acting like children in this regards. It's, it's, it's foolish. It's foolish. That's, that's what this is. Okay? The real world issues that people have personally... Yeah, they shouldn't and always air those out in public, but, you know, <clears throat> it's just, a lot of stuff should be handled more privately. If it's personal stuff, you should definitely handle it privately. It's one thing to get advice from friends or family and whatnot, but, you know, it sucks when uh, things get out of hand. 
Doesn't Intel see that it's throwing in its lot with some pretty gross misogyny and ignorance? And it's, it's pretty stupid, in a sense. Well, after Gators hailed Intel, Intel's decision as a victory for their letter-writing campaign, hashtag Operation Dis Disrespectful Nod, the company appeared to appeared to realize it had become duped by gamers and the fake ones into supporting a misogynist movement. Okay. I'm going to see if I can get this one right. We recognize that our action inadvertently created a perception that we are somehow taking sides in an increasingly bitter debate in the gaming community. That was not our intent, and that is not the case. Intel does not support any organization or movement that discrimin discriminates against women. We apologize, and we are deeply sorry if we offended anyone. I'm also sorry if I may have offended anyone by doing a southern accent. I'm an asshole. <laughs> this is what the company said in a statement. Uh, but it stuck by its decisions to pull the ads. Meanwhile, actual ethical problems in games journalism, like corporate influence, for instance, remain unaddressed. Okay. They spent so much time on this other shit that they didn't look at that. What the hell, man? It's, it's dumb, man. The, the streamlined business tactics with uh, game developers, that's something that shouldn't be ignored. But anyway... Moving on, this is probably because the most popular explanation of what hashtag GG supporters want has nothing to do with reforming the business of games writing. It's this, they just want to play games without complicating things by discussing how these games portray women and minor minorities. Well, yeah, it's one thing to just want to play games. And they, of course, don't want don't really want to discuss how the industry treats these same groups. I know, right? Because they just blow things out of proportion. It's, it's really what it is. People taking games way too seriously. That's the problem here. These discussions are fine, but they feel... Uh, the, the, they feel that these discussions are fine, but please don't force them to confront these inconvenient issues or hashtag shove them down our throats. I know, right? That I can understand. Whether they realize it or not, they've just had what's probably their first real encounter with the concept of privilege. And then there's that talk about men's privilege and white privilege and all this other shit that, SJW, that SJWs like to throw around. For a very long time, being part of the Target demo has meant being able to enjoy games made for, and for the most part, by people like you without without ever seeing those games inter interrogated from another perspective. Projects like Anita Sarkeesian's hash, uh, like Ani projects like Anita Sarkeesian's Tropes vs. Women in Video Games inspire such vitriol precisely because they've pierced that bubble of privilege and started con started conversations stating that gamers can't conveniently ignore and that can be hard to accept. Oh, definitely, yes. Especially since, you know, it's fucking stupid. Especially when you identify with a group that has traditionally been at the bottom of the white male social pecking order. Okay. But white people aren't the only ones that play games. Okay. I mean, not much else to say other than petty squabbling. Just multiplied by thousands, <laughs> apparently. Well, there's always there's people opposed to it and people with it, but you know what I mean. The vile behavior and disingenuous mission of hashtag Gamergate makes it easily to forget that although it may be sheltering a few real psychopaths, we're mostly talking about very young men, kids in a lot of cases. As Leia Alexander lay Leia Alexander pointed out that a uh, gaming discourse has made it this far because most people who drove the game's industry's revenues in the past have definitely grown up since then. All right, unquote. 
That doesn't excuse the damage that hashtag Gamergate has done, but it does offer a thread of hope that this current crop of angry young men will grow up too, and learn to enjoy a brave new gaming world that isn't all about them. We can only hope, right? Okay, illustration by Jim Cook. All right, so all I can really say is this is just nothing more than petty squabble multipli multiplied by thousands. It's something that I personally think isn't really helping anything. But, you know. Sorry, I was just drinking some water. Um, I just want to say, there's not much more I can say than that. I mean, this is more having to do with representation of uh, certain things and certain elements. And basically people getting butt hurt over the most stupidest craps. The stupidest crap, which is how certain things are portrayed in gaming, how certain cultures and genders and such are all portrayed in games. It's really stupid that they would, uh, like, I'm not saying that everyone who gets mad about those sorts of things are, you know, wrong. I mean, it really depends on what they're arguing, if you know what I mean, but the Gamergate thing was stupid. Anywho, that's pretty much it. Thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you all in the next videos. Stay batty, my friends.